So, I mean, it's worth understanding, first of all, that there's a lot of competition in your inbox and you probably have this yourself with your own emails. So there's some stat, it was from a few years ago, it was the average office worker receives 121 emails per day. I'd say that sounds pretty accurate. And what that means for us is if you want to stand out, you actually have to have something valuable to the person you're sending the email to, right? It can't just be company updates, what I've been up to, offers, discounts, deals, promotions. So the mindset shift is that nobody cares about you or your brand yet. You have to demonstrate value and provide value for the people who've joined your list. Because again, going back to the way the wall gardens operate, it's all about providing as much value for your users as possible. So there's a way I sometimes break this down, especially for the dispersal stage, are just these three pillars of educate, enlighten, entertain. So educate by providing valuable information that your audience might not be able to find anywhere else. So one example of this is a retail hedge fund I work with. So they send a weekly email and inside they have conversations with top managers from other funds, links to their podcast, as well as breakdowns about where they are in the market cycle, uniquely from the positioning of this hedge fund. Then at the bottom of these emails, they have their fund performance and a CTA to learn more. It's nothing overtly in your face. It's more value than anything else. What this does is it builds goodwill with your subscribers. They want to open your emails because they know they're getting value out of it. Enlightening or inspiring uh, with solutions to problems that subscribers are struggling with. So I've worked with quite a few authors in the past. One author that I've worked with in the past writes books that help tech professionals overcome procrastination and distraction. So after subscribing via a quiz on his site, they receive emails that address specific weaknesses that are identified in that quiz. So this is something that's going to be really interesting to those people because they've expressly completed this quiz, which converts at a higher TSC, by the way. Another way to do this is just straight up entertain your subscribers. There's a residential real estate agent here in Sydney. So I think it's once a fortnight. This guy spends, you can tell, quite a bit of time putting together really well-written, often pretty funny emails, kind of having jabs at other real estate agents and the state of the market. And his open rates are fantastic because people look forward to opening his emails because they know they're going to be entertained, even if they're not going to have any fantastic educational information about the market, they're not going to be inspired to buy or anything. But for him, it serves the purpose of just creating a little bit more brand awareness. And then he also just includes some listings at the bottom of the email. Perfect for him. So if I was sending emails for a new email list, I would always be thinking, does this email I'm about to send either educate, enlighten or entertain? If the answer was no, I just wouldn't send the thing. Once you do that, that's when you're going to start seeing really good open rates and you're going to break out of this engagement, retention, feedback loop, and you're going to circumvent the top-down cascade. Really, the industry-wide open rate is something in the order of 15 to 20%, maybe. That's quite low. You should be getting much, much more than that, 35 40 45%. That's really the area you should be aiming for. And if it's below that, you can know that you there's still work to be done to make sure your audience is interested in what you're saying. So the first part is this mindset shift of educating, enlightening, entertaining. But the second part is focusing on timing and relevance because while it's nice to provide value to people, there's always a common objection at what point will subscribers actually buy. So yes, there does need to be a point where conversion happens and subscribers actually buy your products and or services. So you need to focus on value for new subscribers, but after achieving that initial engagement, it needs to come a point where you actually start sending offers. This doesn't change the fact that from the subscriber's perspective, they're only ever receiving value. So there's nothing wrong with sending an offer or promotion email, but the timing in which it's sent transforms its meaning. So think back to times where a brand has sent you an offer or promotion email and it's come across as annoying. It's only because you weren't ready to receive that. If you were shopping for a product and you were really ready to receive a discount on it and they sent that to you at the right time, you'd think that's great. So the way I sometimes formulate this is an email's relevance is the difference between spam and value. Poor timing is the best way to guarantee poor sales and the inverse is true. Great timing is the best way to guarantee great sales.